What's up guys, my name is Ace, and the first weekend of the beta for Modern Warfare 2, the PlayStation weekend, is now over, and yesterday Infinity Ward gave us a blog post talking about a bunch of the things that they're looking into adjusting, as well as just addressing various points of feedback. So in today's video, I'm going to go through this point by point, and just share my thoughts and opinions on each one of these points. And some of these sound great, at least on paper, of course we'll have to wait to see how these changes impact the game, whereas other points I want to have a bit more of a conversation about. Now before we do this, I think it's important for me to state something that some people haven't quite been getting with a lot of the videos I've been uploading lately. Most of the videos I've been uploading over the beta weekend have been feedback videos. I've been honing in on particular elements that I feel have room for improvement and providing my thoughts and constructive feedback in those areas. And as a result, I feel like some people are getting the impression that I'm hating this game because I'm only talking about the negatives. And that's simply not true. This is the beta, the devs are asking for feedback, and therefore that's my primary focus right now is providing the best feedback I can possibly give in the most constructive and professional way that I know how. In general, I'm actually having a good time with this game overall. It's definitely not my perfect Call of Duty game by any means. I think there is a lot of room for improvement and there are some key changes I would love to see. But at the end of the day, I had a lot of fun with this beta over the weekend and I am looking forward to the launch of this game. So with that in mind, let's start going through this blog post from Infinity Ward. And the first set of things that they've got listed here are essentially just bug fixes and stuff. So they say fixed various crashes, addressed a few gameplay exploits, patched some map geo and lighting issues, and updated progression for some gunsmith related bugs. I'm assuming this is like the inability to put attachments on certain weapons that you do have unlocked. When it comes to all this, obviously, this sounds great. It's good to see they're working out some technical issues and bugs with the game. And I did want to make a little point here. I've actually had very few complaints on the technical side of things with this game. I played a lot of hours over the weekend on my PlayStation 5, and I saw literally one crash, which is pretty impressive for a beta build of a game. Typically, you'd expect crashing more often than that. And while there were a couple bugs like out of map glitches and stuff, I personally didn't run into them, and it looks like they're going to be getting on top of those quickly. And basically the only bugs that I've noticed that I found to be quite annoying are those gunsmith bugs where you have a gun unlocked and you want to put attachments on it, but you literally can't. The game just won't let you. So on the technical side of things, I'd say generally this has been pretty impressive for a beta. It does seem like this game has a lot of polish in those areas. Now let's move on to the next point, And this is going to be probably the hottest topic of this video. This has to do with the minimap dot rules. This has been probably the top gameplay related complaint I've seen in the community since the beta launched. And Infinity Ward has addressed this and this is what they say. Currently in the Modern Warfare 2 beta, we only show enemy player dots when a UAV is active. The design reason for this is we do not want to punish players for firing their gun. We also want players to actively search out the origin of a gunshot versus traveling directly to where the dot is on the minimap. We continue to gather feedback on how the game is playing in regards to this topic. So from the sounds of this one, it's basically we hear your complaints, but we disagree. We think the game plays better without it. And to some degree, at least, fair enough. It's obviously their game. They can design it how they want. And part of me is at least happy that they addressed this. They came out with something and tried to explain their gameplay design decision with this. Having said that though, I do want to touch on a few reasons for why I disagree with this decision. The first one is I just feel these red dots showing up on the minimap. It simply gets people moving around the map more and it improves the entire flow of matches. And this is especially true with the spawn system that they seem to be using based on some analysis that I've done. I will be making a much more detailed video of the spawn system within the next couple of days. So I'm not going to get too deep into this topic right here. But essentially, they once again are using what a lot of people call a squad spawn system, where spawns are heavily anchored more toward teammates rather than positioned on either end of the map. So there's an obvious front line and an obvious sort of this is my side of the map, that's their side of the map. And what this means is the general map flow is all over the place. It isn't something that's just intuitive to pick up on. And I just found in previous Call of Duty games, having these red dots on the minimap makes a big difference for everyone, not just for higher skilled players that want to abuse it, but for lower skilled players that just want a better sense of direction of where should I be expecting enemies to be coming from. And as a result, I feel like this is contributing to generally slower paced playstyles because people don't know where to go. And since they don't, they'll just let other people come to them. And this does go against what they stated here, where they said they wanted players to actively search out the origin of a gunshot versus traveling directly to where the dot is on the minimap. And I don't think this is really getting people to search out the origin. I think it's more often making people feel less confident pushing out and moving because they don't have enough information to make that move comfortably. 
Also, on that same sentence where they say they don't want players just traveling directly where the dot is on the minimap, I don't really see a problem there. The people that are doing that, the people that just beeline straight for red dots on the minimap, those are some of the easiest kills to get in the game. And if anything, I remember a lot in previous Call of Duty games, I'd purposely have an unsuppressed gun to try to draw those types of players in because they were essentially free kills. And if they weren't willing to learn that it's not always a good idea to just run straight for a dot, then they would often be punished for that until they ended up learning. I feel it's a good thing to get people moving around the map and obviously still offer any playstyle variety that people want. If you want a camp, that's fine. Even if you are a camper, you should want other people to be moving around. That'll give you more traffic and more people to kill. And the red dots do just that. They bring people to you. They keep people moving around. And I personally think that's great in a Call of Duty game. It's one of the reasons I play Call of Duty over other shooters. Additionally, on this topic, what's the point of suppressors now? I mean, sure, it makes your gunfire a little quieter, but on the size of maps that we see in Call of Duty, you can still hear a suppressed gunshot just fine at basically any distance where it's relevant to you. Also, this time around, I was happy to see that at least the suppressors we have access to, they have some pretty big trade-offs to them, like we saw with old-school suppressors, and that used to be balanced really well, in my opinion, with red dots on the minimap. Either you go loud, you show up on the minimap for firing your gun, or you choose a suppressor, which back in the day at least, used to significantly harm your range values, and therefore this would make you objectively less powerful in a face-to-face -face fight against somebody that has an unsuppressed gun, but you gain that benefit of staying off the radar, so now it's in your best interest to try to flank those players, take them off guard and get the jump on them so that you can take full advantage of that suppressor, because in a face-to-face -face fight, again, you're at a disadvantage. By taking these dots off the radar, I feel like suppressors are becoming a lot more useless. And on top of this, I feel like it makes stealth play less rewarding and satisfying because everybody has those benefits by default now. There's nothing special about taking a suppressor and actively trying to be that stealthy guy, making sure there's trade-offs involved there as well. Like I said, that's a very important part of this dynamic is ensuring that you are less effective in face-to-face -face fights, but in doing so, you're rewarded in other areas. I feel like this change to the red dots on the minimap just sort of homogenizes everything and reduces that playstyle variety and careful choices and trade-offs that players used to have. At the end of the day, like I said, this is their decision and if they're gonna stick to it, that's fine. But since it seems like there's an overwhelming majority of people, at least within the spheres that are sharing feedback on the game, I mean, it's the only place that we have access to see feedback. When polls are run on this, the overwhelming majority seems to want those red dots put back on the minimap. So at the very least, why not do some A-B testing with this, especially in a beta phase of the game? Maybe create a playlist where you have red dots active. Let us see for ourselves if this harms the gameplay flow or improves the gameplay flow. Let us check it out for ourselves, gauge the feedback, gauge the reaction, gauge your data on the back end on that, and then go from there. I totally get that they don't need to make changes based on every piece of feedback that they get from the community. That would be ridiculous and probably not even good for the game. But this is one area where I feel like there's just such a big outcry for it within the community that it's at least worth exploring a little bit further rather than just shutting down entirely. And that's all I'm really gonna say about this particular section. As much as I disagree with this, it's not gonna be a complete deal breaker for me. It's not like the game is unplayable without red dots on the minimap. I'm still gonna play the game and I'll still be able to play the game very well. It's not like I need these red dots. I just feel it would improve the general gameplay pacing and flow. It's worked great for well over a decade of Call of Duty games. And at the very least, I'd love for them to at least test this out and gauge the reaction based on that. So there we go, that's the minimap talk. Now let's move on to target tracking. They have provided feedback on this. I made a video about this yesterday talking about poor visibility in the game, especially in gunfights. It does look like they're gonna to be toning down the amount of muzzle smoke. So the opacity of that's gonna be decreased. And it looks like they're also gonna be increasing the visibility of third person muzzle flash to help you engage somebody so you can see where their muzzle flash is a little better. And hopefully they also reduce the opacity of that third person smoke. So when an enemy fires his gun, he isn't just concealed by a wall of smoke that magically appeared out of his gun. So those sound like great changes. I'm excited to see just how much they tone this back. I hope they do it enough. Additionally, with this blog post, they did confirm that the lack of enemy name tags above their head is not a bug. This is intentional. And they said that they are gonna be investigating more ways to visually differentiate between enemies and friendlies without using that name tag. And when it comes to this, I'm open to seeing what they're gonna do. I still feel the red name tags is sort of the simplest solution that has always worked in the past. 
And I personally don't see much of an issue there, especially since they can tune all the values like how close to the center of the screen the enemy player needs to be, or the range that they have to be for that red name tag to appear. But if they do manage to find a better way to differentiate between enemies and friendlies in game, I'm absolutely open to seeing what they've got for us. So I guess when it comes to this area, we'll just have to wait and see. And now let's move into the user interface section, which I am glad that they've addressed this. When it comes to this, they said they've identified some UX issues as well as some bugs. And while they won't be able to make these adjustments in time for the second weekend of the beta, which makes sense, they are going to be top of mind ahead of launch. So it looks like we can expect to see some user interface changes for launch. And I'm glad to see that. I think the user interface should definitely be more intuitive than this current system. As for the next section, this is talking about perks. With this, they said they've seen varied feedback on the perk package system. Some players love it. Others feel it's an unnecessary departure from the original system, myself included. They said they feel it's a nice shakeup to how perks work and the general progression of the match. And essentially what they're saying here is they'll continue testing throughout the beta weekend too. And for the second weekend, they're going to drastically accelerate the earn rate of these to see how players react. And their goal remains improving the flow of all perks ahead of launch. And for me, I think this is fine going into the second weekend of the beta. I mean, a huge portion of the Call of Duty player base hasn't even had a chance to try out this new perk system. So I do think that's fine. I just hope that they are still willing to make more adjustments to this in the future. I don't think speeding up the earn rates of the perks addresses the inherent flaws with this system that I outlined in my perk feedback video, which I'll just link down below so I don't rant about it too much in this video here. I think it might mitigate the issue slightly, but the issues will still remain, and I still don't feel like this is a superior system to the old school style, but we'll give it a shot for the second weekend and see how we feel. Additionally, in regards to perks, they basically just said Dead Silence is not coming as a perk. They want Dead Silence as a field upgrade, and the main reason here is they don't want rushers to be able to move at high speeds without consequence. And once again, this is another point where I appreciate them at least acknowledging this and providing some reasoning behind it, but I still disagree and I'm gonna state why. There are already consequences built into the game for rushing around the map, like sprint out times and the really slow strafe speeds that we've got so we can't really strafe corners very well. Also, there's no ability to pre-aim as a rusher. You have to react to a situation and get on target versus somebody that's already pre-aimed. So that's inherently putting you at a disadvantage as well. Also, as you're navigating the map, you have a lack of cover. You're not standing in safety behind a piece of cover. You are moving around the map, which means you are going to be crossing open areas. That's another consequence for rushing aggressively. Additionally, for players that are rushing around the map, the consequences are you have to be making decisions a whole lot faster. You have to have much better map knowledge, route knowledge, spawn knowledge than the people that are playing more stationary. So that's another consequence is you have to be dealing with more information at any given time and making decisions based on that. Additionally, previous Dead Silence perks in older Call of Duty games didn't completely silence your footsteps, so an aware player could still hear you running up on them. They just had to be more aware than if you weren't using Dead Silence. And finally, on this topic of Dead Silence as a perk, what happened to the idea of trade-offs? I'm totally fine sacrificing some amazing perks out there that more defensive playstyles can use to their advantage to help counter me in exchange for those quieter footsteps. Let me choose perks that help support my playstyle and let them choose perks that help support their playstyle. You can put it in the same category as Ghost, so you don't hear my footsteps coming as easily, but if you have a UAV up, you're gonna see me on the radar. Or maybe put it in the same category as High Alert, for instance. So you can't hear me coming, but you get a great visual indicator on your screen if I get a line of sight on you as I'm flanking you. That'll give you a different form of an early indicator. Many previous Call of Duty games handled the trade-offs really well with perks, and I feel like a lot of that has been lost in newer Infinity Ward games. Now, going off of that, let's move into the next category here. This is them addressing footsteps. For Weekend 2, they are going to be adjusting footstep volume a little bit. They're going to reduce the range of footstep audio for various player movement states, including jog, sprint, and tactical sprint, which is great news. I'm very curious to see how much they end up tuning this back. But on top of this, they said they're going to be making enemy and friendly footstep sounds more distinct to help players better understand what's going on as things move around them on the battlefield. And with that one, I'm definitely open to seeing what they do here. But if they take that overboard and make it way too obvious with that distinction, I feel like that further supports just sitting and listening for footstep audio, and it just makes that a little more powerful. But again, we really need to see all of these changes in combination before I can say too much else about it. In general, though, I'm very happy to see that they're at least willing to make some adjustments to the range at which you can hear footstep audio. 
And then finally with this blog post, they didn't mention sliding. They said they're aware of a workaround for slide canceling. Somebody has found workarounds for that. Although I don't feel like they're nearly as effective as the previous slide canceling technique. And they said they're just contemplating how to handle it for weekend two. So it seems like they may make some adjustments somewhere, but they don't quite know what adjustments those are going to be. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see on that. But a nice thing they pointed out at the end here, they said, additionally, we have some other slide changes for launch which will make this movement feel a bit more fluid and snappy. And I like the sounds of that. Fluid and snappy sounds good to me. Obviously, with that one, we'll have to judge it once we get our hands on it. And with that, that's going to wrap it up for today's video. Just talking about Infinity Ward's response to feedback. Some stuff I'm definitely really happy to see. Other stuff doesn't sound ideal to me, but also not a complete game breaker. That's kind of where I'm sitting with this. And this is where I want to hear from you guys in those comments down below. What do you think about this blog post from Infinity Ward? Are you generally happy with what you're seeing there, or are you unhappy about some of the stuff? If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.